Hello 108 students, Mr. McHugh here. We are working on section 10.1 and we're going to continue. We're now going to tackle page 2 of our class notes and we're going to work on a concept of what is the inverse function. Okay now for an inverse function to occur you first need to have make sure that you have a one-to-one -one function and so far we've discovered that linear functions do satisfy that and to help us with our notation we are going to use the symbology of little f raised to the negative one and the question could be asked how do you find an inverse function one method of doing it is to interchange all the components of the ordered pairs for you. So the idea here is that if you're given a function with ordered pairs x comma y, you turn you simply inverse function is found that when you when you have it is simply take the ordered pairs and swap the x and y coordinate positions. So I'm going to um, take these in an example later on and swap the two of them. And so that's that's how you do that. Now one of the things up here in my notes here it's real cr crucial that you remember that it inverse function does not equal the reciprocal and that's that that 1 over f over x is supposed to represent so this is something that you just don't don't want to make a confusion of um, if you go back to my notes here I talk about section 7.6 you might want to review that of, uh, of an inverse function so we talked about it back there okay so now we're going to go ahead here and come up with the way of given an equation how can we find the inverse function of it and I'm going to walk through the steps of doing that and the, the big property that this page is going to talk about here is working with compositions so we're back down here back in chapter 5.3 you might remember we talked about compositions with the little o it did not mean multiply that if you had your inner function was the one close to the variable x and the outer function was on the outside we used to use g of f if you remember back then that you process a, a specific value of x comes into the function you process it in there calculate it that output turned into be the input into the outer function we're going to do the same process now what happens is we've got this unique unique situation of it. when you have a function and you figure out the inverse function of it that the boomerang effect happens that when you put a value for x say 2 that when you put it into the function process it the output comes out into the outer function which is the f inverse that the net result of that is going to be what you inputted so this is kind of interesting so in quick summary when I do these example if you input a value of x for 2 if it goes into the function use the composite with the outer function the result will be that 2 and also the order does not matter now back in section 5.3 we used to talk about that the order did matter but when you have this uniqueness of an inverse function from a one-to-one -one function that you could actually start with a value of x and input it into the f inverse first take that output and stick it back into the original function and that net result will be what you started with so if you put a 2 in you get a two out. Think of a boomerang effect. That's that's how I try to keep that straight in my mind. Okay, so let's go ahead here and practice uh, working an example of this here. Also, this will be an informal proof too of this uh, property that we're learning up here. And so we're going to start with a function f of x equals two x minus excuse me two x plus one. Trying to make this fairly easy. We are going to choose and let x equal two. You can pick any value, but I pick 2 to do this. So f of 2, take the value of x for 2, plug it into the function. Remember, function has got input, processing, output is 5. Okay. Now what happens now is you take that 5, and it now is going to go into to be the input for the f inverse. Okay. Now I've got the work going here, but we need to, we need to pause for a second because we have not described how you determine the inverse of a function f raised to the negative one so we're going to put this on hold for just a second here and I'm going to jump over here to this 
process here. Now this this is very mechanical. You take the original function and whenever you had a y you substitute the x and wherever you had the x you substitute the y. Notice my little statement here swap the x and y. This is the process it's always mechanical swap the x y values inside the equation. Next isolate the y variable so I would minus 1 on both sides of the equation and then finally divide by 2 and now I have the F inverse. And we're going to do another example of this on the next page so we'll be okay here. Okay so that is the F inverse and so with that said we now know and notice it's a function y is the output x is the input and I come over here now and say what is the F inverse of an input of x equals 5. And so I come in, I let x equal 5, I plug it into the inverse function, so 5 minus 1, 5 minus 1 divided by 2 results in 4 divided by 2, and lo and behold, look what you get. The output is the 2. Again, we started with the 2 as the input, we let x equal 2 to start, we went through the function, went through the inverse function, and the output is 2. So that's our proof of uh, the composite of a function with its inverse function. Put a value of x in, such as 2, the output is 2 comes out. Okay, now over here is swapping the inner, swapping the inner and the outer functions. We're going to start with the f inverse first. And so now I'm going to come over here and jump down here and say pick 2 as your input again you get to pick this value I choose 2 to make it fairly easy I put 2 in 2 minus 1 remember that come from over here 2 minus 1 is 1 divided by 2 that's the output of the F inverse it's now going to come in and be the input into the original function original function was 2x plus 1 so now I take the y, excuse me, I take the one half, I substitute it in for x. Two times a half is one, one plus one. Look at that. Two is the output. So we've proven in both of these cases that no matter whether you put the f inverse as the inner function or f as the inner function, you will get the output. Input will equal the output. Okay, so that's that's the big concept we're covering here in this section here. My last, my last note I have here is how to determine a one-to-one -one function. Don't forget tests is are all your x coordinates unique? There's no repeating values. Are all the y values unique? And again, there's no repeating values. We've kind of covered that before, so um, that should just be a review. Okay, that's all for now. So we finished up uh, page two of our notes, and uh, we will go ahead and move on to page three of section 10.1. Okay, catch you, catch you around.